Hi everyone. Welcome once again to the Manhood Diaries. What's that? It's just three guys sitting around scratching their heads talking about their balls. Today we're going to talk about this age-old myth. Does size really matter? Is the size of the penis what makes or breaks a deal? Well, we're going to throw it open. I've got Ankush and I've got Jivishu with me. And here we're going to talk about this age-old myth. Does size really matter? Hit us hard. You're talking to me? Oh, uh, no, it doesn't. Half an inch is a size, okay? No, jokes apart, but I think for me, um, I only got to know size well apart much later when I started experimenting with porn to be looked at, right? You know, I, there was, there is no, I wasn't doing the comparison part probably. So, and everybody thinks like for them that that is the biggest. And uh, and very early on, this is where we're talking about nascent stages of teenage. I don't think so. There's a comparison standard. What a set standard for it. So does it matter? I would be the worst guy for answering it because I have not used it for my pleasure. For me, I'm sure anybody for that matter, small or big, they pleasure them, if they're pleasuring themselves, it works for them. It is the other person who is the recipient of it has to be the right person to answer. Right. I hope not. And I, I am sure it's a it's a very skill-based thing. But yeah, looking at the parameters of porn, I'm sure it does at some point, yeah. How about you, Ankush? Yeah, exactly what he said. I think, you know, it's, it's a question better to be answered by you know, you know, people who are interacting with it. But um, but in my own interactions with a cock, you know, like of somebody else's cock also, I think it really depends, you know. Uh, uh, some people really, for, for them size does matter, yeah. you know. And well, that's, that's what it is. And for some people it doesn't, you know. Some, some people are demisexual, you know, they just get aroused by romance. So, I think it's also one of those things, if you have it, then you would, you would say it is better. Right. It's like, you are, how tall are you? How tall are you? Six. I'm five four. I always come up with defenses of or the good things about being short. So I think it's very yeah, subjective, yeah. as he rightly said that if you have it, probably you will think it is working yeah. and it is important. But I honestly don't think so. That's a derivative yeah. or right. that's a set. Aki ye hai to zindagi khush hai aapki. I am sure somebody with a big dick is also very miserable at the same time. Yeah. But but also like. Uh, I think now that I've grown up more, I have understood that sex is in the whole body and not just yeah. in your cock. True. You know, so you're and talking about yourself and not about your dick when you say growing up. That too, baby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a difficult question to answer. I haven't measured it ever, okay. which I know a lot of people have, but I haven't. But I really understood that more. There's an episode in Friends where Joey cannot, you know, do penetrative sex and he learns to do everything else. It's like that. You learn that. You know, you learn that. Oh wow, you know, like the sex in the whole body and okay. uh, it's like you just want to play the piano or you want to have the whole orchestra so so where do you think this myth actually came up from was it uh, from you know school boys sitting in line comparing them i'm sure them? some guy with big dick i'm sure that's what it is that's how it starts you know like you and i in the same school with it being tall is the best where you know <laughs> and that's it the majority of it and also the fear of it if i don't agree with you so like everybody, for example, uh, you know, if my female friend says that she likes tall, dark, and handsome, and I'm all the opposite, like short, fair, and cute, I would sideline myself because that is the majority what they look at. Right, it sort of kills your chances. Yes, yeah, so for me it does, right? So for me, I would never sleep in with it. So my defense, my defense mechanism would be humor. In sex, probably with not dick size, then you will have like maybe more attention, foreplay. You know, a lot of these porn that you see. Zero four play does happen. Yeah, I mean right there. True. But historically, if you see, if you see all of those Michelangelo's, David, and all, they don't have yeah. big penises. And in fact, it was believed that small penises represent fertility. So obviously, something has I changed. Love so there's an argument I love both it. sides. Like, you know, yeah. For yeah. The, for the smaller, as well as the yeah, like, just like just like he that. It, so he's yeah, short exactly. Okay. Then speak about it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. how do you how do you suggest that one one works on the technique? So you think that a skill set of the tool is more important? Like we just discussed that, you know, size is really not, you know, big on the argument. So then what is? Is it the skill? I think the best teacher is the person you're with. That person has to tell you how it works. So being and attentive? Being attentive? Absolutely attentive. I mean, if you're not attentive, you're a dumbass. You're an absolute dumbass. Um, the woman on the or the man on the other side has to tell you what works for them. And certainly it's not a similar pain stroke for everyone. So the more relationship, the more partners you've had, you absolutely grow better as a lover. So I used to make this very stupid joke, every time I lose in love, I become a better lover. Which is not in connotation of love, mm -hmm. but in the connotation of probably sex. 
so yeah i think the best person is the person who's at the recipient side and saying this works for me orgasm no orgasm size no size four plate talk discussion cuddling i don't know no mind if your eyes are closed keep your ears open at least yeah in kama sutra vasan says that uh, sex is the art of pleasuring the other yeah you know the moment you get this yeah. even if you're in an orgy and if everybody is focused on pleasuring everybody then everybody yeah. is pleasured correct right. but if you're only pleas- interested in pleasing yourself yes, yes. it's not going to happen yeah. you know somebody is going dry also like learn about what you are interacting with in the sense that wh- what is a vulva what is a vagina what how does it operate what is it you know uh, like i i know so many men who do not even know that there is a thing called cunnilingus you know and uh, they are amazed by that oh ye bhi hota hai ladkiyon ko bhi orgasm hota hai you know like yeah, i've actually that i've heard that i've heard right that and you're like what like <laughs> hello yeah so that's also there yeah. so what is really the key to an orgasm If there was a one liner answer I'd be the richest man on earth. <laughs> I wish I had the answer to it. Yeah. But I certainly would know that I give enough effort um make her if the woman wants to be felt special if she wants uh done softly or done probably a little rough one she likes to be spoken dirty to I don't know whatever it is from the other side mm-hmm. being willing to do that and participate in it wholeheartedly and putting her first is the key to it. So that's the key. Yeah, because men have this massive. Yeah. So men, yes, usually have this great advantage of having a penis and hangs outside in a rex. But the worst part is that once you're done, you can be the prettiest woman on earth. They're like, please, then, okay. Mm. Like, I would rather go smoke a cigarette. So we don't have the longevity of it, which women does have. They they actually have it. So yeah. you might as well put them first and make it special. What about you? What do you think? Like you have to really know what they want and work on it and think about orgasm as a mutual thing. you know the the moment True. you uh, include mutuality you know there, there there's a, a, a line in la confidential reciprocity is the basis of all relationship so unless you learn to reciprocate also to his point if you make it better for the other person you might as well have a chance again for doing it right. if you make it really stupid for that person yeah. like yeah please exactly like, you don't want to see that person yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean do you think the uh, humongous size of the male penis in porn that is available to us Uh, is actually counterproductive what you see is what you perceive right i mean you think that and the woman is making noises of the noises that you've never heard in life you must be thinking this is it this is it and why do you think penis enlargements and section and sexual enhancement skill the ads on porn sites is usually this you take this one pill and it grows by 98 inches i like the cameraman doing this together yeah pills <laughs> but i've been through that scam. yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so and this is why it sells because it sells there is a market to it yeah i felt You have to realize you can't grow taller, you can't go hair back. There's nothing called penis enlargement that is stupid. If you could figure that out, you're the richest man on earth. You're the richest person on earth. Period. Swish, what do you think? Yeah. Um, I think I think porn is a great site to understand of patriarchy. You know, and uh, when we say talk about it, we usually say that it's का मतलब ये है और ये वो. But actually, it's it's a system which affects even men. And porn is a great site to understand that yeah. because what happens is you see those big penises and you see these uh, unbelievable, you know, unrealistic standards of masculinity and you know how somebody can do it for hours and stuff and people go like, what? There must be something wrong with me, you know? I'm not doing it right. What he, what he said, you know? That I have a friend who only kind of grew up in this America-made, uh, studio-made porn, and uh, he's otherwise a very sensible, tender person, but he cannot enjoy sex unless it's hardcore. Yeah. You know, and it has come from that pornography that he's seen. And once so we had this long, of the act. So at the beginning of the talk, we spoke about the other half, right? Now, does the other half really understand the male organ in terms of performances, in terms of lack of performances, in terms of a good day, in terms of a bad day? Do you think? I'm sure they they are equally challenged. I mean, they grew up in the same society. They grew up in the same society. They're willing. They're. Uh, Uh, exposure to that the same pawns books whatever it is are talking to uh, equally dumb founded friends who are there mm-hmm. yeah i mean so they most of them they don't even have a clue to yeah absolutely again as i said previously that the more you get into this you know uh, and the better you get at it that's simple if you pay attention i'm sure there are some women who are great in uh, pleasuring men and there are some women who suck at it and similarly goes for men do they have all the women figured out men no they have figured out yeah men wanted better because we are like ha ha this is it but from the sex part i don't think so they they equally equally uh, clueless a lot of men that i meet you know um, they are struggling uh, although they have a penis but they are still kind of figuring out how to please the other 
and this just this much just to learn this that you, the job is to please the other it takes a lot of unlearning and cultural work yeah, because yeah. Sex is always looked at as, even in our culture, it's looked at as a very selfish act. You know, you're sex karne ga, you know, like, you're doing it for yourself. Do it, do it. Yeah, so it's always about Why you in a strange hotel room thing is there, um, the, you can't take hours for hotel room hours, you can't. I'm yeah. boss, I don't want to go to night. I can't go to night, I can't go to night. Exactly, thank you. You don't get it, like, I don't know if I'm standing in the morning, we're going to go out and go out. Yeah, it's not a doctor, 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 it's not Absolutely, the the barrier that has to be broken from both the sides. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But how does one really ensure that he gets the right skills? Willingness to learn, probably. I think all of this has been always there. Videos, a porn, up was online. Yeah, pehle videos mein hota tha, cassettes mein, VHS mein hota tha. I mean, I'm sure we have both gone to video cassette shops. Ki bhai, yeh zaroor scene wali picture de do. So we, but it is the willingness. To learn probably and make an impact of it. Otherwise, so yeah, you can be one of those dumbfounded guys. That's my job. Okay, brother. Okay, okay. Bus. So you, it is the willingness to learn. The mediums have always been there. Either it has been the books earlier on, or the architecture, or the the Ajanta and Loras, and you know, it has always been there. Yeah, yeah. It's the willingness to make it happen probably. Yeah, I remember uh, someone actually gave me this example once mm-hmm. about scale over technique, uh, mm-hmm. scale over size. Was that you can have a red Ferrari, mm-hmm. but if you don't know how to drive it. Mm-hmm. It's useless having the Ferrari. Correct. I'll just add to it. The guy who asked you this question or said this had a red for red Ferrari. <laughs> no. And proper probability, he will not have it. No. no. Exactly right. So the person who has the red Ferrari will never make the statement. That's what I was saying. So mm-hmm. somebody who has a big dog is like, "Hey, Bhagwan, give us our mercy, bus." Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Right. So, well, that's it for us. Um, it's again the end of Man and Diaries. It's three guys sitting around, scratching their heads. and talking about the balls thank you for watching